Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode right here at 2020 Flight Simmers. If it's your first time joining us on the channel, I'd love to welcome you and highly suggest you go down below, tick that subscribe button, hit that bell, and smash that thumbs up button. You don't want to miss any future videos just like this one. Speaking about videos, this video today is all about the Stream Deck and how to use it as an interface with Microsoft Flight Simulator. So, if you want to know what apps you need, and they are all free, then stay tuned right here on 2020 Flight Simmers. Alright guys, so if you want to know how to set up your Stream Deck for your Microsoft Flight Simulator, then most likely you already have it and you have downloaded the Elgato Stream Deck software. So now the next bit of software that you're going to need for this whole system to work right is right here and I will go ahead and post a link down below for the GitHub for this fine developer that had done this all for free and continually updates this application. So the first thing that we need to do is go down to the bottom here, go where it says for users and tick on a user guide. Next, we're gonna go up and download the latest version from the GitHub. So if you left click on that, it will bring up all the latest versions. You're gonna tick right on that very top version and then tick on download the Flight Tracker Stream Deck plugin. Now while that's downloaded, we can go now and hit the back button. There's one other application we're gonna need so that we can navigate the G1000 and I believe the G3000 suites. You want to download and install the, the mobiflight.com downloader so you're going to left click on that and it will bring up the mobiflight connector. So all you need to do is go ahead and left click on a download the connector application and those two are the only things that you need. So the first thing that you want to do is to go ahead and open these up and install both of them. Now, one of the things that I will tell you is when you go and try to install these, they may bring up an error screen that is going to tell you, whoa, wait a minute, this could be a virus. Go ahead and hit run anyway and install both of these applications. Now, when you go ahead and install the Stream Deck plugin, it is going to ask you, do you want to install this? You're going to go ahead and click install. The next thing that it's going to ask you is if you want to install the profiles. Go ahead and click on install profiles. Next, once that is done and you click on the MobiFlight installer and install that, it's going to bring up a big dialog box in the middle of your screen here. And you're just going to make sure that everything gets installed. After that's done, you can go ahead and click out of that big box that's on your screen for the Mobi Flight, and then you can open up your community folder. When you open up your community folder, you're gonna find one thing in there, which is the Mobi Flight event module, and that's what we wanna make sure is installed right in our community folder. Now that that is done, we can go ahead and tick that in the off position, and once you've installed the Stream Deck plugin, it should have opened your Stream Deck application for you. On the first page of the Stream Deck application, I like to put in all of my various applications that I'm using for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So my little nav maps, Sky Vector, Sim Brief, Chart Fox, Vat Sim, Pilot Edge, and all of those are right here. Now the first thing that you're going to see when you open up this application, if it is your first time opening the application, you may have a ton of different drop downs on the side. We need to consolidate that down a little bit by ticking on that little box and you are going to only need three of these, Stream Deck, System, and Flight Tracker. Go ahead and hit the Done button and then we can expand each of these menus. Now to be able to enter an application so that it can open it for you, all you need to do is go down to the Open and drag and drop it right down on your screen. Now when you do that, you can enter the title whatever you want it to be. And when you enter that information, it may or may not bring those letters up here on the button. What you need to do is tick here on the text icon and make sure you hit show title. When you do that, it should populate up on top of the button. Next, you're going to go down here and tick on these three buttons and go click on the application EXE that you want to run. That is all there is to that. If you want to open a website, same thing same principle bring over that website type in whatever you want that name to be and again if the letters do not populate then make sure that you go over here to the text and hit show title 
Next, you're going to enter the URL that you want to open. And that is pretty much it. So under ChartFox, I have the ChartFox.org set up. So when I hit this, it will open up my ChartFox website for me. And there we go. So that is the ChartFox website. If you haven't seen that website, that is a very handy website, especially if you have a VATSTEM account. And if you don't, it's so easy to get one. You need to have it. So we're going to go ahead and delete that one. The next thing that we need to do is set everything up for our different planes. So to be able to set various planes up, we need to create a folder. So all you need to do is drag and drop a folder icon down, and I name mine FS2020 Planes. When I click on that folder, all of my various planes show up, and each plane has a different menu as I don't need the same settings on every single plane. So we're going to go through a very quick and rudimentary setup for you real quick and show you how to set this up. First thing that you need to do, and if you go to any one of these blank buttons that are on your screen and you try to double tap on it, nothing is really going to happen. Again, we need to start a new folder for our brand new plane. We're going to call it a test folder. And now when you double click on that, it will bring you into a whole new panel of unused buttons. So now we're going to use our flight tracker menu and we're going to set this up really quick. So the first thing I want to do is set up a navigation menu. So all I need to do is go ahead and create another folder and I'm going to bring that over here and call that nav and comms. Perfect. Now when I click on the nav comm menu, it opens up all new slate for me again. So I go ahead down here to the preset buttons and drag and drop a navcom button right up on my screen. So if you tick on that button under the type, you can select what you want this button to function. We're going to set that up as COM1 and we're going to set our second one up as COM2. You're going to notice a couple different features down here. You can set how you want the buttons to function. So if you tap on the button, it's going to swap your frequencies. And if you hold down the button, it'll bring up the number pad so you can enter your frequencies. You can also tell it whether you want the battery master and the avionics to be on or off, or if it doesn't even matter. And you can even enter a background image if you wish to do so. Go to your snipping application on Microsoft Windows, and then you can snip a picture and put the picture right in the background. Makes it really cool and customizable. Next, all we're going to do is set up some navigation frequency buttons. We're going to come over here and we're going to call this Nav1 and Nav2. Oops. Nav2. So now that we got those set up, there's a couple other things that you probably want to have, and one is going to be your transponder. Yes, we can set up a transponder too. Go down there and set that up, and we can go ahead and set up an ADF1 and an ADF2 if you wish. We'll go ahead and set both of those up for us. Now that pretty much takes care of our COM menu for us. Now you can also enter uh, a view menu. Now I have some of these set up on other planes and to do that all I need to do is start a new folder and we're going to call this airplane views. So instead of using your number pad on your keyboard, you can set this up for your views. So if you tick in the views, uh, you can then create a hotkey. So if you go over to hotkey and you pull that in, you can name it what you want. You can load us. Uh, we're going to name this uh, custom one. And that is going to be our custom one view. All we need to do is click on this button and then press on whatever button on the keyboard that you want it to function. So now when I click on custom one, what it's going to do is essentially be pressing the number one on the keyboard for me. And again, if I wanted to change that and say, hey, I want it to be, I want when I press custom one, I want it to hit the P button, then you would just hit the P button in there. And whenever you hit that custom one, it's going to hit the P button on your keyboard. So that is kind of how you can set up custom views. So we're going to go ahead and delete the views button now. Now that we got our nav com set up, we want to set up some autopilot functionality. So we're going to just drag and drop some preset toggle buttons here on the top screen or on the top line here. 
And if we click on that, uh, now we can go down and turn that into heading. We can go down and turn that into altitude. We can also set one up for flight level change and we can set another one up for vertical speed. Who knew? Next, we can go ahead and hit increase value, decrease value, and enter those all the way across underneath. And when you click on the altitude or heading function, it will activate that in the simulator. Now that we've got that done, we need to program what each of these do. Now, as you see, we do not have any titles above these buttons, and that's because I didn't put a title in. Again, when you add that title, you got to make sure you come over here and show title, and then it will put it in for you. I'm just going to enter these real quick. All right, there we go. So now under the plus and minus, if you tick on that, then you can select a function for that as well. So if you want that to function for your heading, all you need to do is click on heading. And now if you hit the plus button here, it's going to increase your heading and that's going to decrease your heading. Same goes with the altitude function. All you need to do is click altitude and now whenever you click this button, it's going to increase your altitude or decrease the altitude and same goes for flight level change. Just remember, you have to click on the function at the top to activate it. Same goes for flight level change and vertical speed. So now we've kind of set this up pretty quickly. And as you see, it didn't take a lot of time at all. There's a couple other buttons over here, which is a generic gauge and horizon button. Uh, the generic gauge is something that you have to program what you want it to be a gauge for. So now all we have to do is go back to the flight tracker GitHub page. And now on that initial page where we downloaded all that information, it's going to give you some more information towards the center of this website page. Now, as you're going to see, there's a couple different menus. There's a toggle event, there's a feedback value and a display value. Toggle event is something that you want to turn on or off. Pretty simple. So if it's something uh, that you, lights that you want to turn on, gear that you want to bring up, flaps that you want to put down, that is what, that's what a toggle event would be. Feedback value would be if you set your toggle event for flaps, you want to know what flap value they're set at. Well, your feedback value would tell you uh, what your flaps would be set at. And then your display value under here will show you if something is turned on or turned off. So they all do different things and to, to get those menus up, all you need to do is click right here and this will bring up all the various toggle events that you can input into your stream deck. As you can see, there are hundreds of different things that you can do with this stream deck and some of the best ones are with the G1000. Now, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, it has all of our Moby flight controls. So as you see, these have all of your G1000 controls. You also have G3000 controls in here, and also a couple other ones for the Cap 140. There are different planes, the, uh, what's this, for the 530 GPS, the 430 GPS. Uh, we also have stuff in here for the CJ4. There's custom buttons for, I believe, the A320NX. There we go, the Neo. So there's custom buttons for Moby Flight for a lot of these different airplanes. So you can customize this Stream Deck to kind of fit any application that you want. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of my setups that I have in here, and I'll show you how I have these set up. So under my Cessna 172, I have a couple comms, nav, and transponder at the top. And then I also have my barrow button. So I don't have to hit the B, board, B on the keyboard. I could just hit barrow. And what I've done here is I went ahead and copied an image to put in the background. Now to set an image in the background, all you need to do is click on that button. And if you go down right here, you can see this little drop down. If you click that, you can set an icon from whatever you uh, have. So I went ahead and snipped a picture of the barrow gauge and then went ahead and put that right behind that button. Under my PFD and MFD screen it brings up a bunch of different knobs that I have already preset up for the G1000 in the Cessna 172. Under ATC again I have my ATC menu set up and then all of the different buttons that you could have for your ATC menu. Also have a pushback and comm and transponder in that menu as well. 
Under fuel, you can set up different fuel pumps, pedo heat, fuel valves, a bunch of different things. You can even set up different drone views to operate your drone camera. So that's pretty much how you set up your Stream Deck to use with Microsoft Flight Simulator. Don't be afraid to explore these different menus here, the feedback values, the display values, and get really customizable with your Stream Deck and your icons. I hope everybody learned something from this video today. If you'd like to know something else, go ahead and pop that down in the comments. If you need more information on how to set up the Stream Deck, I'll be more than happy to go over everything with you. Thanks again for everybody joining us here on 2020 Flight Simmers. If you haven't done so already, please click that subscribe, tick that little bell, smash that thumbs up. It really helps us out. Again, I want to thank everybody for joining us here on 2020 Flight Simmers. And as always, keep the blue side up. We'll see you on the next one.